This morning, uh, before we turn to God's Word, uh, it's a special morning. Last week, if you were here, we had our annual congregational meeting. And uh, beyond approving our, our budget and vision for ministry in this upcoming year, one of the things that we did is we asked the congregation to prayerfully consider who it was that God was calling to the offices of elder and deacon. And this morning, we intend to uh, ordain and install those that God has selected into these offices. Those two people are Jason Palm and Jim Winky. And uh, I can't quite see where you are, but i like to ask that you come forward. That's why I can't see. They're off to my left. You guys didn't leave any seats. <laughs> It's crowded here, especially for those of you who are having to sit in the foyer today. Uh, we apologize for that. You can see that we're making some strides as a church to do something about that uh, as you walk in today, but uh, we're glad that you've joined us as well. Uh, Jason and Jim, we want to thank you so much for responding to God's call. And as a congregation, we really believe that it's God himself who called you into these offices. And for uh, not only your benefit, but for the benefit of us all, I'd like to take some time to just talk about what it is that elders and deacons are called to do. And Jason, I'm going to start with the office of elder. And uh, this is what we as a church have said that uh, elders are called to do as we reflected upon the scriptures. Elders serve by governing the church in Christ's name. They received this task when Christ entrusted the apostles and their successors with the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Elders are thus responsible for the spiritual well-being of God's people. They must provide for true preaching and teaching, regular celebration of the sacraments, and faithful counsel and discipline. And they must promote fellowship and hospitality among believers, ensure good order in the church, and stimulate witness to all people. And um, those tasks are high and holy tasks. And uh, that is what you're being called to. Uh, Jim, as I think about deacons and as the church reflects on deacons, this is what the church, reflecting on the scriptures, has said about deacons. Deacons serve by showing mercy to the church and to all people. They received this task in the early church when the apostles designated special persons for works of mercy. In Christ's name, the deacons relieve victims of injustice, and by doing this, they show that Christians live by the spirit of the kingdom, fervently desiring to give life the shape of things to come. Deacons are called to assess needs, promote stewardship and hospitality, collect and disperse resources for benevolence, and develop programs of assistance. They're also called to speak words of Christian encouragement. Thus, in word as well as deed, they demonstrate the care of the Lord himself. Uh, these tasks are the tasks that uh, you both are being called into as uh, you are installed into the office of elder and deacon. And uh, as you do that, we ask that you stand here on this stage and in the presence of all God's people, respond to four questions, uh, answering affirmatively, I do with God's help. These are the questions. First, do you believe that in the call of this congregation, God himself is calling you to these holy offices? Second, do you believe that the Old and New Testaments are the word of God, the only infallible rule of faith and life? Third, do you subscribe to the doctrinal standards of this church, rejecting all teaching which contradicts them? And fourth, do you promise to do the work of your offices faithfully in a way worthy of your calling and in submission to the government and discipline of the church? Uh, what is your answer? I do, God helping me. Great. As uh, part of what I'd like to do this morning is I'd like to give each of you a charge. And Jason, uh, I'm going to begin with you. I charge you as an elder to guard yourselves and the flock of which the Holy Spirit has made you an overseer. You are called to be a shepherd of the church of God, which Jesus bought with his own blood. Jason, I charge you to be a friend and Christ-like example to children, to give clear and cheerful guidance to young people, by word and example to bear God's people in their pain and weakness, and to celebrate their joys with them. I also charge you to encourage the elderly to preserve in God's promises to be wise counselors who support and strengthen the pastor. Be compassionate, yet firm, consistent in rebuke and discipline. And you're charged to know the scriptures, which are useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. Jason, I charge you to pray continually for the Church of Jesus Christ in this congregation. And I want you to remember that at all times, if you are to give true spiritual leadership in this household of faith, you must be completely mastered by your Lord. And Jim, I give you this charge as a deacon in this church to inspire faithful stewardship in our congregation. We charge you to remind us that from everyone who has given much, much will be demanded. We charge you to teach us to be merciful, to prompt us to seize new opportunities to worship God with offerings of wealth, time, and ability. 
We charge you to realize that benevolence is a quality of life in Christ and not merely a matter of financial assistance. And therefore, we call upon you to minister to rich and poor alike, both within and outside this church. We charge you to let your life be above reproach, living as an example of Jesus Christ, always looking to the interest of others. As a congregation, I think it's so important that we not only recognize the blessing that we have as people step forward to lead a congregation, but also the tremendous responsibility that they bear. And so as a congregation, I just charge you to hold these men in your prayers, in esteem, with your respect, and continue to pray for them. In fact, that's what we're going to do as we ordain them into this office. What I'd like to do is I'd like to ask everyone here who has served as either an elder or a deacon in this congregation or another to please come forward, and we're going to place our hands on Jason and Jim and pray for them. So if you have served in the office of elder or deacon, either in this congregation or another, would you please come forward and lay hands on these gentlemen? And uh, as we pray, I'd like to ask that you join me and that uh, your prayer continues to be for uh, these gentlemen as they serve in our church and, and lead us by their calling in Christ. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we praise you so much for the gift of leadership you have given to us. We thank you, Lord, that uh, as you call us to lead, it's a call to service, that we would be those who would uh, put ourselves last and put others first. We pray, our Heavenly Father, that you will bless both Jason and Jim as they serve in the office of elder and deacon here in this church, and we pray that you'll bless them for our benefit and for the ministry of Jesus Christ in your kingdom. Lord, may you continue to build them up as disciples of Jesus, strengthening their faith always. In difficult times, when they're faced with uh, difficult choices, we pray, Lord, that you'll give them wisdom and guidance and the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we pray that you'll continue to pour into them your word and teach them your scriptures so that they'll know how to lead us in a way that is fitting of the kingdom of Jesus Christ. We thank and praise you, Lord, for the ways in which you continue to provide for your church. And we ask, Lord, that you lead and guide us all by your word and by your spirit. And we pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you all. You may be seated.